Here we are on a Victory Wednesday. Hello, everybody. Pick 6 Podcast. Sam McEwen along with Tom Chattel mm -hmm. and Evan Bland. The weather is coming in. You can feel it. It was sort of murky today, a little bit of fog, a little bit of rain. And by Saturday, it's going to be Big Ten weather. 40 degrees, rain turning into sleet, sleet maybe turning into snow. Big Ten weather is here just in time for Halloween. How are, how's everybody doing? And I know how much how big of fans we are of bad weather. How's yeah. everybody doing? Yeah, it's here. I, you know, it's not that the Halloween of '97 uh, where That's we right. got a snowstorm, but um, maybe it will be. I don't know. I the thing about it is nobody knows. It two days ago it, it said 44 degrees. Not, I know it's down to 39. It's It keeps dropping. So I was inspired, maybe you guys were too, by Matt Rule's love for bad weather. I mean, you could tell, even when he was being asked about it on Saturday, like he had this little glint in his eye, he's holding back <laughs> right. a smile. Like the colder, the, the wetter, the windier, that feels like yeah, that's what he's all about. What's I'm the, not there, but he's there. What's the worst weather game you've ever been to? Oh, boy. Um. Yeah, I don't know. It's um. I've been I've been been through a lot of them. Um. The the the, the Penn State game where we had to drive. Well, yeah, yeah you drove us through. <laughs> yeah, that was the snow. drive was bad. That was terrible. And um, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, the one I always remember was uh, God, maybe eighty six or so. Uh, it snowed in Lincoln, and they're they're killing K State. Actually, K State was terrible. The game was pretty close at halftime because yeah, because of the snow. Um, so they came out and they they plowed the field at halftime. The K State coaches were pissed. <laughs> that was my first game as a fan. Was it really? <laughs> yeah, my older brother Marty took me to the Kansas State game in 1986. It's the first game I went to. And it's the first runs that I ever had. Ooh. Yeah. Both on the same day. <clears throat> the old press box was, was rolling that day. No, I don't know. I mean, it was just a... I remember uh, 06, the 06 Big 12 championship game in Kansas City against Oklahoma. Brutally that, cold. That game felt like it was being played on the moon. Uh, people were digging out of out of their chairs. and I mean, it was sub-whatever. Uh, and... and you know, nobody will feel sorry, but like in the press box, you had to actually like chip away at the windows like you would on a on a car on a cold morning. Uh, the Chiefs were not interested in paying much of a heating bill that day, or maybe it wasn't working. But uh, yeah, that was that was miserably cold. We're gonna get about forty degrees on Saturday, and it's going to be well, it's gonna be a game about line play and running the football and hurting people on defense and those things. We'll get to that in a minute. We're gonna start with. With Nebraska volleyball, I think that's a good place to begin. They won the match of the century. They won it in five sets. They won it in a weird way on the final point, but that match was incredible. Tom, you were there. Um, I know you wrote a great column in, in, what, 18 minutes? I mean, that in a compressed amount of time, you wrote exactly how I think everybody in that building felt. And, um, I mean, just an extraordinary experience, right? Yeah, my... Um the old days where I uh, covered high schools and uh, in Kansas City and um, had had to stake out either like a bowling alley or a restaurant before the game. So I, right after the game, I would go to that place and make sure that they had a pay phone. I had to pray like hell that they nobody was on that phone uh, after the game. You know, you, you keep your own stats, then you go to the phone in the bowling alley. And uh, you, you called the desk, and then you, 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 you dictate a story, and like whatever, whatever. And so that, that that came rushing back to me Saturday night. I wasn't calling in to you um, or the desk, but I, I had to write it. I, I just sat. I had I, I, there was nowhere to sit. I didn't have a seat. I, I stood in the tunnel and watched the whole thing, which was even better. Because I, I, I was at floor level, and I got to hear everything and it, what it felt like on the floor. And um, went to the workroom and wrote on my lap. had my laptop on my lap. It was actually a laptop. And um, it was great. It, the whole evening was, um, I mean, I, I have to think about it. But I, at the time, I thought, I've never seen anything like this. 
at, at Nebraska in any sport. And, um, I mean, the, the football games, have, you know, they either been so far ahead or so far behind. I feel like Nebraska football doesn't produce those kind of games very often. No. Uh, there's a handful of Nebraska basketball games over the years. You know, Jamar Johnson hitting the shot to beat KU in overtime. Um, a few of those. Yeah. But not much. And that, to me, that might have been the, the, the best Nebraska athletic event I've ever discovered. Mm. That's pretty cool. That's uh, certainly, it, it looked like it on TV. It just looked wild and, and uh, spectacular. Well, Nebraska well, did it. They won. Well, very rarely do you get a sporting event where the crowd is, every play is, is a noise. Mm. You, know, you, you don't get that in football. Right. No. You don't, you don't. get that in basketball. Every shot is a noise. Everything in that match was a noise. Right. Either, oh, or explosion. Yeah. And so it was just so intense. And so, yeah, it was, it, you know, and I think we, we, we didn't, we, we felt a freedom, at least I did last week, and, and okay, I'm going to hype this thing up because it's, it's going to deliver. And it did. It really did. So now they go into a week where, I mean, from here on out, they're going to be expected to win just about everything. And then the final weekend, they go to Wisconsin and Minnesota on back-to-back days. That might be the moment. Where uh, where they lose a match? This is going to be an odd question, but I'm curious what your guys' opinion is on it. Would this team benefit? We're talking about winning the national championship here. Would this team benefit from a loss? And by that I mean that as the pressure mounts to stay undefeated, going all the way through the season, does that pressure get so great that maybe they would have an uncharacteristic performance before? They win the national title. Then a loss maybe takes that pressure off, and they can learn from it. And it doesn't really affect who they are as teams. This isn't college football. Teams lose games. Thoughts there? Typically, I would say yes. I I would, but I feel like this Nebraska team has already kind of shown that it's going to play to another level. Like they've embraced playing in front of ninety two thousand. They've embraced sort of the <clears throat> the status that they have, right. uh, taking it to another level. So like. I almost feel like that would be a motivating factor for those for those players and 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 Coach Cook, right? He's won national championships. Uh, I don't think he's ever had none, has he had an undefeated season? First one, the first one was undefeated. Yeah. So it's that been a long year. time since he's done that. Uh, it's almost like Nebraska volleyball is so big that like winning a national title obviously is is a huge deal. But what if you can do it a little better? What if you can be undefeated? What if you can? Uh, have a little extra reason to remember that particular team. And I think the team is young enough that maybe that kind of they don't know what they don't know factor right. comes into play a little bit more as opposed to when Harper Murray and company are juniors and seniors. There's more of a legacy at play there. Uh, this is so early in the story that maybe that's something that would motivate them. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I don't always buy into that that thinking uh, because I think uh, you just want to win. Um but I don't, they're not going to go undefeated. I think they're going to lose at Wisconsin. I think they're they're or they'll they're. I think the pressure will get up there, and um, but that's good. That's what you want. Um, you know, maybe they'll win. You know, they, they, they'll win most of them. They'll win. I think if they lose, it might just be one match. But um, you know, if they, they if they get into the postseason, they're going to be thinking about undefeated. They're going to be thinking about getting to the final four. And the, and then trying to win that. I don't know if the undefeated is something that, that, that they're going to shoot for. Um, you know, yeah, but who knows? Maybe if if we get there, that'll change. But um, you know, um, would you rather go undefeated? Or would you rather have the loss, or would you rather win at Wisconsin? I mean, think about that. Which would you choose? Would you would you rather? You'd rather win at Madison, right? Right. And take your chances. Okay, the pressure is going to get us, but um, um, that's the only one I see him losing. Maybe, maybe Minnesota. The the you know the the the, the weekend, um, but the Wisconsin one's first. I think they. I think that's, that's it a, is first. That's yes. the well. Nebraska's playing Iowa on on that uh, the Black Friday. It's it's a three p.m. game in Madison. 
It's 11 a.m. Um, football. Right. Perfect. And then you get off and you go watch that somewhere. Um, right. Yeah. Um, but uh, Wisconsin football is not playing, so the, the, right. that, that place will be crazy. I said 11 p.m. I meant 11 a.m. Yeah. CBS, 11 a.m., Black Friday football, BTN, 3 p.m., Black Friday, back to volleyball. That's pretty – Yeah. That's that's quite a double header. What do you think about – whether they should have a loss or, or if so. that would help them. Yeah, I think it probably benefit them. Yeah, um, okay. Some of that is because I think today going undefeated in club sports and all those things is actually really rare. Losses are maybe normalize things a little bit. I guess I go back to the Kentucky basketball team that lost Indiana, and then they mowed everybody from there. And the Kentucky basketball team, they got all the way to the Final Four, and they almost didn't get there because they almost lost to Notre Dame, and then Wisconsin really took them out. And I just – Sometimes I think that can be very that can be a pressure on mm -hmm. you. Like you know, we haven't lost. We don't know what we're gonna do. But you know, Tom makes a good point too that they didn't. They beat Wisconsin, but they know what it's like to go all the way to the brink of losing, mm -hmm. and so that probably will help them. They they, they did play great, uh, but they they played great enough to win, right? right. They dug in. I just think that. Um, Undefeated is not going to be on their minds as they go forward. I think it's it's um, you know they they want to go to the final four and and, and do that and um, but um, they, I think I still think that this thing is a little fragile. They're really tough, but they're they're young. They're yeah, they're young. They're they're not mowing everybody down. Right. Sometimes they they lose a set or early or um, I don't know. Let's well, just sit back and watch, I guess. Yeah. But I, I think it'll be um, if they lose. I, I, I think Wisconsin will be gunning for them, obviously, and uh, they'll have to handle that. But that match will help them as they go forward. And I, I think we'll. I think we'll, there, I think there's going to be a, a third Nebraska Wisconsin match. Me too. And I would just say quick too. I think being in the Big Ten makes a difference in that discussion too. I mean, Nebraska in the Big Twelve forever. It was. 3-0, 3-0, 3-0 every week. Yep. They weren't ever challenged, not really, unless not they were like playing that. Texas or in the in the postseason. So I, I think the Big Ten changes that conversation from what Nebraska volleyball used I to mean, be too. I, I remember watching their matches at I think it was at, I think it was at Purdue and at Indiana. And they kind of struggled in those a little bit. So they I think yeah it, it can't hurt to lose you know but yeah you you want to see how far they can go but. Uh, at this point, they're they're going to be rem they're going to remember the stadium match, and they're going to remember last Saturday night, and then they're going to remember whether they're not that they won the, the national championship. Mm -hmm. So, right. yep. I'm not saying, but I'm just saying. Nebraska is number one in RPI, um, and number eighteen, which could very easily be number sixteen, is, is great. If Creighton goes down there and has to play them in the Sweet Sixteen, that'll be a lot of fun. Hmm. Uh, because that's a team that wouldn't be intimidated. They've never beaten Nebraska, but they won't be intimidated by them. And that that would be really, really would, interesting to see if that they, happens. It could happen. Would they get sent down there the, the, the first weekend? Well, probably not, because uh, I think they seed the volleyball now the way that you're supposed to, which is, one, you know, if the S curve. And so I think the way they do it is volleyball. Right. If you're a 16, right. you get to host. Right. And... You know, so it's possible. I don't think Creighton is going to host, and I, I, I shouldn't want to. <laughs> they didn't, they didn't go <laughs> whenever well they host, they lose. So, no, no, no. That's um, a point. so right now they're kind of on. Of course, the line you always of want like, to, but right, um, right now they're right on the line of whether they would host or not. And you know, I think the argument that, and this isn't the Creighton podcast, but the argument Creighton will make is that well, we lost two matches without you know an All American, so now right. she's back and right. give us the seat. So we'll see what happens. But on to football. Um, I'll be, you know, I'll, I'll be frank. I, I think, uh, I think this weekend is is a huge game in a weird way. Uh, this Nebraska obviously beat Illinois, and I think we all kind of sensed how important that was. They survived against Northwestern. You talk about ugly. That was an ugly game. Uh, they won it though, and that's all that really matters for a team in its first year under a new coach. But this game, if they're able to win this one, you almost feel like, okay, here we go. Like there now, there's some genuine momentum. You didn't beat the worst team in the Big Ten West. You beat a team that's probably equal to your talent and isn't a grease fire the way Northwestern is. I think they have an opportunity. If they win this game here, um, I'm not 
Maybe this is overly optimistic. I think they could get on a little bit of a mini roll. That would be their third straight win. I think that'd be their first three-game winning streak. 2016. Since 2016. So this feels like a big game, and it also feels like Nebraska has a ton of respect for the team they're about to play, even though that team is 2-5. and five. Yeah, that's true. I I mean, to me, the, the blueprint's pretty clear, too. Like, do what you did. Uh, you know, pound the ball, body blow after body blow, as they say on offense. Rely on your defense. Maybe you'll get a play from special teams. Maybe you'll get a takeaway. Like, that's what it's going to take for Nebraska moving forward. And Purdue's just as flawed as Northwestern and Illinois in a lot of ways. I mean, they, they give up big plays. They can't really score that well. Hudson Card's probably the best of a weak crop of Big Ten West quarterbacks. but He's um, got some skill. He does. Yeah, he does. He's not bad. But, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think there's some confidence there. And to me, the – you know, it's been so interesting, I think, to have the glass half empty, half full discussion of like people wringing their hands about how ugly it's been. I mean, I've tended to look at it the other way, where it's like even one of those mistakes that Nebraska made last week against Northwestern would have killed it in the past. Right. Like it would have snowballed. They would have dwelled on it. They would have lost. And, you know, as flawed as it's been, they, they keep overcoming and finding ways. And that to me is like what we're seeing right now as a team in real time that's learning how to win and it doesn't have the personnel yet and it's a year one and there's a lot of 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 smoothing out of wrinkles to go but like the guts you can tell are just starting to set in and and you know how many times in the last three months have we heard get one percent better relentless discipline violent win the rep and like when you have that hammered into your head 1.2 million times in the off season and then you have that moment against illinois against northwestern like it feels like they're living it like they're, they're not they're, they're not dwelling on it they're moving on to the next rep and that's how they're finding a way yeah, I, I really wonder about the 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 balance still of um, they got to throw the ball, but you cannot have that same start either way. You can't no. you can't tempt that. And I realize that the the play was there, the receiver was open, but you don't have a quarterback who's going to get him the ball every time. It's he's going to struggle. Yep. Uh, it's just what it's just who he is, and so. Don't do that again. <laughs> Don't come out of there with two interceptions first five oh. plays. That <laughs> you might you might think you might be down fourteen nothing or ten nothing, right. and then you got an offense that, that can't come can't can't come from behind. So um, I just gotta be careful. They gotta throw it right. They gotta. They didn't throw it that much, but did you just coming out of the gate last week was just like okay, be careful here. Um, that's kind of who they are. They. You know they have to do something. They have to throw it at some point. But um, I just go back to uh, Jimmy Johnson, the famous coach and Heineken drinker. Um, <laughs> used to uh, Heineken on ice was his drink. Oh, um, okay. He um, he had a fa- he's a defensive guy, right? His his famous line was. Um, the uh, most important position on the team is the uh, defensive line. And his philosophy was uh, defense wins games, and the, the, it all starts up front. So he, he always made sure he, he, he had the best defensive line of any team. And mm-hmm. so um, that, feels like, that feels like Nebraska right now. I agree. It starts up front. Yeah. Are we going to see the, the polar bear? Is he going to maul people again? Just He just – so it's like like watching Alex Karras in a bar room, uh, uh, you know. Uh, 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 <laughs> you remember the movie Blazing Sandals? Yes. He's up against the piano, you know, he's throwing people around the room. That what polar bear charges through there. Ty Robinson, you know, if these guys control, they they can wreak havoc. And that whole defensive line right now is is just a joy to watch. Um, if that's ugly, give me more ugly. Um, I just, you know, they're going to have to win or they get on defense and can't turn it over. That's just very simple things on Saturday. And you feel like this season is just razor thin. You know, everything is so fragile and held together. It's, I mean, it's, it's whole, this whole season, I feel like, is, is held together by like, duct tape. It's just, you know, it's, or it's a house of cards. Be careful. You lose one, then you might, you know, oh, what's going to happen? And I think that the coaching staff is going to keep their heads 
every game. And, uh, you know, they, because you lose one of them, I mean, you lose a bunch of them. But I feel like every game is kind of like that. So um, they got to gotta be tough. And they, when things go bad, they can't lose their mind. And, um, but, yeah, you feel like every game they play is almost a 50-50 thing. Mm-hmm. And um, they're going to outplay them. And, that, and that, that's fun to watch. Of the guys that started the second half against Minnesota, remember Marcus Washington didn't because he didn't. Well, he played the second half. He didn't play the first half. Three starters remain from that second half against Minnesota. Bryce Benhart, Ben Scott, and whichever tight end it was, Bora Kircher, Fedoni. That's it. Everybody else is a backup. I think we kind of all view Heinrich Harburg as the starter at this point, and quite frankly, I think he's played better than Sims did in those seven quarters that Sims played. So I'm not... That to me isn't isn't as big of a deal, but uh, the three receivers, the running back, and three of the linemen are out. Um, it reminds, it, even though the the 2009 offense with on, honestly had better football players than this group does, um, it reminds me of that. Like the 2009 offense was so bad and so frustrating, and people were so fr- fed up with Sean Watson. You probably remember this at Baylor. That year, you know, Bo's giving his presser, and some yes. fan comes up yes. and goes, you suck, Watson! Yep. And they rattle the cage, and Bo yeah. goes over there and looks around. It was, yeah. Oh. Contrary to popular belief, that was not Dirk who said that. No. It was, it was a fan <laughs> behind the behind the fence. Um, oh, and it was intently. And Bo's like, How did they beat Missouri that year? How the hell did they score that point? He, he found Miles Paul on a long yeah. pass in the, in the rain. Mm-hmm. It was about bad weather games. That, that was a bad weather game. Like three turnovers in the fourth quarter. They, and they, they got enough offense to win that game. Um, that offense, by the way, averaging a full touchdown more than what the current offense is for Nebraska. As bad as, as much as people remember that offense for struggling. For sure. You know, and, and, and I'm not trying to compare this defense to 09. That The 09 defense is one of the great Nebraska defenses ever. Um, and this isn't as good of a defense. And quite frankly, the offenses they're playing aren't as good as the offenses at 09 Nebraska played. I mean, no this. I mean, 09 Missouri scored 35 points a game. So, uh, but it does feel like there's, if they could win this one, this, there just feels like a momentum. Like, oh boy, every team on the way out's got warts. I mean, Michigan State is, uh, Maryland's, I think, a better team than Nebraska, but by the time Nebraska plays them, I don't know if they will be. I do think Wisconsin's better. I, I you know, and, and Nebraska hasn't ever won up there. And then Iowa, I mean, God. I mean, yeah. I think this is this could be Kirk's last year. Like it's it's obviously not working on offense. Yeah. That could be seven to six. Um, so there just feels like a moment here where even if Nebraska is not great, they could be good enough to to run off a bunch of wins, and Matt Rule will take every one of them. Like he's not going to kick any of these out of bed. So um, I'll be curious to see kind of how it goes. I, I do think Purdue's got better football players than Northwestern on offense. They can run the ball. Contrary to popular belief, they can run the ball, and they will try to run it against Nebraska, even in bad weather. So we'll, um, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. Uh, and and we're gonna, we could do this every week. We could just basically, what is Tony White's salary going to be in next year? <laughs> this week. And what is Tony White's salary going to be this year, next year? Next week. Like, it's... It's 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 going up by the week. That guy is gonna make. I mean, he's gonna be hard to keep. Well, it's, unless he's a head coach, and then he's gonna go. I but mean, yeah, well, he's gonna be hard to keep. They gotta they gotta they gotta do something first. I mean, yeah, he's he's marketable. He's he's attractive. He's got he's the guy. But if you're another AD and you need you know you were another head coach, they they need to go to a bowl game. They yeah. need to do something. Sure, they can't. I agree. They can't go five and seven and well we we were really close and our defense really grinded it out and played their ass off and yeah yeah I mean you you can look at him and see what he's going to be and hire him right I I don't know, I think he's he likes rule a lot I talked to him yesterday off off out in the hallway about rule and and um, I think he likes it here he's getting Nebraska he's still learning I mean you don't. We have to, you know, we run this place down because they don't win, mm-hmm. and they and they and and it's been it's been a comedy of errors for twenty years. But this still this place still has a lot of cachet. It, people want to be here if you're winning, and we forget 
this place when you're winning, there's no better place to win. Um, so we'll see. Uh, I don't know that he was anxious to leave. He just got here. Um, and again, he's he's at a pretty high level. He's in the Big Ten. Uh, he's going to get players that he hasn't probably did wasn't able to get at Syracuse or San Diego State. Right. So um, we'll see. But I don't think he's in a hurry to leave, and they'll probably be in a hurry to pay him. Guess what? The, the, they got the money. They do. So uh, give them a nice raise. Nobody fans don't care what people are making. Somebody out there does, but. <laughs> At this, it's all funny money at this point. People are making, coordinators are making over a million. Okay, fine, whatever, just win. I think, too, like the, you talk about the opportunity for, for Purdue. So say they beat Purdue, and then you see Michigan State and all the issues that they have. Like suddenly Nebraska's got a quarter of the season left, and they'd be bowl eligible, and they'd be playing with house money for like the first oh, yeah. time in however long, right? And so like the narrative for this team – since Rule got here, was year one would be a success if they make a bowl game. So if so, Purdue, you know, if you beat them and you get into Maryland, Wisconsin, and Iowa, and you you're already bowl eligible, and you're in the West race, like things can change really quickly. I mean, in a you're talking, way. oh, absolutely, yeah. you're talking about taking off, just never uh, have, yeah, exceeding expectations for the first time in for for a long time. Well, that, they they wouldn't possible. be bowl eligible this week, yeah. though, would they? No, 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 not this week. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Is like yeah, this yeah. week kind of sets the stage for this what is that a big could one, be. I think. I think this is a big game. I, to me, this is the one where it's like, you know, you pr- like Tom said, you probably can't do what they did to start the Northwestern game and expect to be down only three nothing. You know, so and I don't think they will. Clearly, I'd but. like to see the defense get some more turnovers too. Agreed. Um, they're you know. They're going to change the game. If they play like they last week, they're going to change the, the the pocket and what Purdue can do and, and, and how they move the ball. It would be, still be nice to help that offense out a little bit. Would. Well, the Big Ten West race is interesting. I think Minnesota technically controls its destiny. Uh, they're probably going to lose to Ohio State or Michigan or Ohio State in a couple of weeks. Wisconsin controls its destiny, but they play Ohio State on Saturday. And, uh, you know, so that's the, the – Ohio State is the Big Ten team that doesn't cheat its ass off, apparently. <laughs> um, allegedly cheat. Um, you know, I, that's, Iowa's still right there. They're right there. If, if yeah. Wisconsin Very blinks, much. Iowa's got a path. They do. Got a clear path. Um, it's just a question of that offense. Uh, what are they going to do about that <laughs> offense? Um, I don't know that there's much they can do. I mean, did you see the – People are upset about the the, the pump return and the uh, the fair catch and all this stuff. Apparently, there was a play on the on the punt. The one of the Iowa guys jumped up in the air when he was trying to block block a pump, and he was being blocked, and that's illegal. Yep. And they said they should have that should have been called, and they, uh, Minnesota should have got a first down, and there shouldn't have been a punt. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, what a weird. The sequence that whole thing is, and so um, I and I, I I don't know. I, like Iowa has to play uh, Rutgers still, maybe in, they do. In yep, Illinois. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, Illinois, Rutgers, Nebraska, and, probably uh, Northwestern. Northwestern. Mm-hmm. So at Wrigley Field. So where ninety percent of the fans will probably be Iowa fans. It's hoping for a World oh, yeah. Series conflict there, but it didn't Well, you know, happen. I mean, most Iowa fans are Cubs fans, yeah. right? Yeah. That'll be yeah. Unless you live up by Generally. Fort Dodge, then yeah. you're a Twins fan, I guess. That's right. That game will be a pitcher's duel. <laughs> That's hmm. good. Okay. You're just going to have to write that in first downs <laughs> next week. That's great. Um, yeah. Well, it'll be really interesting. I think, uh, I think this could be, you know, the final year for – maybe I'm wrong about that, but Ferentz, I – I don't think you can keep doing this to a program where you win these games in these oddball ways, but you, you cannot recruit offensive players. Well, like, it's just hard to win. You know. and, 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 and why would he want to do it? I've just, why would his son want to keep doing it? To, you, know, you know, he's dragging his dad's legacy in the mud. Why, why hasn't he resigned or go to the NFL to coach offensive line or, or – Step back and coach the Iowa offensive line. And let him hire another coordinator. 
made me. I don't. I've never. Un, I don't understand anybody. This is like taking stubborn to a ridiculous level. Right. And mm-hmm. um, so yeah, it's these things sometimes don't end well. And um, but you know, they, can they grind out a one last West title? Yeah. Go to Indianapolis and throw caution to the wind and. Take on Michigan, and does anyone really want to win the West at this point? Uh, the, the, you know, what, isn't second uh, place the best one to be right now in the West? Where are all these teams going to finish next year? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Nice. <laughs> Over the next in twenty twenty four and twenty twenty five, and this is true in Nebraska too. Uh, I was going to play uh, Ohio State, USC, UCLA, Oregon, Washington. Not. All five in one year, but they're going to play those five teams. Like, be, you be, can't really take this to that. That'd that's be a good time guy. to maybe step aside. <laughs> Nebraska's got to do that stuff too. And rule, I think rule dang well knows they got to do something with the offense. You don't have to do anything right now, but you better figure it out because well, you're not going to be able to, you know, win ten to nine against Oregon. I, like I wouldn't be afraid of USC's defense. I'm telling you, let me no, say that. Be. Uh, I'd be more afraid of Oregon and Washington. Of course, I'm not sure. Big Ten defenses are afraid of USC's offense, to be honest. But um, Notre Dame I, and I don't know what, what Lincoln Riley's going to be doing after the season. So um, if the, the USC thing, but they, they have a good AD, so that their next coach will, pro, will, will probably be somebody really good. Will. Might um, be the Washington coach. The Iowa – Iowa has a new AD as well, right? Or, or no, did they hire again? Interim, interim, and I think yeah. they'll end up hiring her. her name's Beth Getz. She's so. Good. I wonder how that all that'll play into it. But, She's a winner. Uh, anyway. Uh, basketball on Sunday, we don't need to go over that unless you want to. I We'll talk about this on the Half Court Press podcast. Nebraska's going to play let's a basketball w- exhibition on Sunday. Let's watch them play. Yeah. That's, and the women will play on Sunday, too. Um, we know a little bit more about them now that Allison Widener's out. Let's go to the picks. Uh, Tom is up seven. Evan is behind by five, and I'm behind by seven. So he's up seven on me and five on you. Right. And, and I, before last week... I made the I made the uh, statement. Um, the, the the winner buys lunch for the other two. But you pick the place. All right. The winner picks the place. I'm not having one yet, so. You haven't won yet. But um, we do we but, do. But bowl that's games. what's at stake here. We do bowl games, and one year I caught up on Evan because of that. I was down like twelve. When I caught up. I still lost because I gave you the option of picking LSU or Clemson in the national You, you were Malcolm Hartzog, and I was the Northwestern ball carrier just I, getting dragged down. I, I got Nebraska volleyball right, and I, for a while there, I wasn't sure I was going to happen. You picked Wisconsin. I got I was, oh, my goodness. What a crazy ooh. pick that was. Wow. I got, was, I got Wisconsin football right, and I didn't yeah. think that was going to happen. And no. I picked Iowa, and how'd that happen? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. The world's biggest cocktail party, Georgia, Florida, and Jacksonville. I can't pick against Georgia. Not yet. Georgia's going to lose a game. Maybe to Missouri. Uh, well, but maybe, not but to Florida. They're going to lose a game. I think when they go to Tennessee, that could be one I'd probably pick the, the balls. Could. But I'll pick Georgia this week. Yep. Bulldogs. Yep. I don't like Florida. I never have. Oregon at Utah. <gasps> I'm going to go Ducks. Oregon. Um, Utah. The, what's interesting about this series is the last five or six games have been total blowouts. E- either way. Okay. We make our first foray into the FCS. Number one, South Dakota State. Going to top ten ranked South Dakota. Mm. In the Dakota Dome. Again, South Dakota mm. State's number one. USD is 6-1, and one, and uh, they've already beaten North Dakota State, all this stuff. So here we go. Jacks or Yotes? What do you think, leader? <sighs> Who's number one? Which one? SDSU. I'll South Dakota State. That. I'll go with that. Jacks. I'll zag. I'll go USD. Yotes. There you go. There you go. That's basically what they call it up there. Jacks and Yotes. Coyotes. Yep. yep. Amy Williams always goes, go Yotes. Duke and Louisville. Which one Duke are you going with? Uh, I went with uh, the Jacks, South Dakota State. Okay. Uh, Duke and Louisville. At? At Louisville. Duke at Louisville. I'll go uh, I'll, I'll go Ville. Evan? Give me Duke. Duke. Yeah, he's, he's got to try to, you know, the only way to catch up is to, is to 
zag when I zig. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with Louisville too. Duke, the team that Doc Sadler wanted to play instead of Creighton. Tennessee at Kentucky. I'll go with Kentucky. Remember when Doc Sadler said that? No, I we don't. should go play Duke. <laughs> okay, well then go play him. No, you didn't do that. You played Kansas and it didn't work. You out. played uh, Presbyterian and uh, you know Elon, not Duke. That's just as clueless and Barry Collier. Are do that thing. <laughs> I mean, I go God, just play Creighton and beat him, and we'll don't worry about I it. I want play Creighton. I want just play Duke. Play him. It's okay, a good go play him. It's a great game for the for the <laughs> state. Good God. Um, what, what am I doing here? Tennessee um, at Kentucky. Tennessee. Tennessee. I took Kentucky. Uh, Tennessee's got great uniforms, though. That's like one of my favorites in college football. Uh, Colorado, UCLA. I'm going to take UCLA. I, I'm done with Colorado. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go with Chip. Yep. Chip Kelly, not Chip the mascot. Sorry. <laughs> Chip Kelly. Oh, here, here's one. Oklahoma at Kansas. At Kansas. That'll be a fun one. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I'll take it with you. Oh, okay. I know. I think. Yeah. Oh, you. I think I think KU might win, but I I've, I've seen them. They beat Oklahoma at home over the years. They, yeah. But uh, I don't know if there's a quarterback still out. No. He is. Well, he's been out for a while. Yeah. yeah and the other guys. But they're they're too. still pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. My daughter's not going to the game, so if I get, well, if she doesn't think it's a big game, maybe they won't win. So. Uh, I'm going with KU. I think it's time for Oklahoma. I don't know why. Yep. Could be. Uh, okay, this is the bomb of the one. Uh, I- Iowa State at Baylor. I don't know. This was the n- the tenth game. I'm sorry. Um. I'll go size. Okay. I don't like Baylor at all. Evan. It's at Baylor, right? Yep. I'll go Baylor. Yeah. I'm gonna go Baylor too. My wife Molly went to Baylor, so I'm gonna pick them. Uh, Ohio State at Wisconsin. Are we in agreement here? Ohio State. Yeah, Ohio State. Yeah, me too. I think that'll be... Yep. And finally, Nebraska-Purdue. Purdue at Nebraska. Yeah, for, first to 20, I think Nebraska finds a way. Yep, same here. Same here. We'll see. I think it's going uh, to be interesting. First quarter matters, fourth quarter matters. All right, that is the Pick 6 Podcast for this week. We'll be back next week. To recap Nebraska's game against Purdue, recap the basketball preview the season because it starts the following week, and talk a little bit about the Huskers matchup with Michigan State. Thanks for listening.